So tell me, do your thoughts sound a little something like this? What if I have a panic attack? What if I pass out? What if this isn't just anxiety? What if I lose all control? What if I can't get home quickly enough? What if I go crazy? My brain used to throw all of these what-if thoughts my way and then some on a daily basis. But nowadays, I live my life without the what-ifs, worries, and fears. And I know you may be thinking, yeah, right, Shannon, but this type of freedom is possible. And I want to show you how to get there without it being so hard or complicated because it truly isn't. So if you're like, yes, please show me how, I want you to join me for my live 90-minute masterclass on March 27th, where I'll be teaching you how to respond very simply and practically to your thoughts and feelings so that they stop showing up and causing so much chaos. And no, I won't be teaching you how to journal your thoughts or how to challenge them or how to meditate or breathe your way through them. Instead, I'll be teaching you very simple and practical approaches to your thoughts and feelings so that you can finally find freedom from them. So if you're ready to quiet your mind and get freedom from your anxious thoughts and the really uncomfortable feelings and experience lots more peace, simply head to the link in the show notes, sign up, and I'll see you on March 27th. And if you can't make it live, you'll still want to sign up so that you get access to the recording. And I promise the recording will be just as helpful as the live. Welcome to a Healthy Push podcast. I'm Shannon Jackson, former anxiety sufferer turned adventure mom and anxiety recovery coach. I struggled with anxiety, panic disorder, and agoraphobia for 15 years. And now I help people to push past the stuff that I used to struggle with. Each week, I'll be sharing real and honest conversations along with actionable and practical steps that you can take to help you push past your anxious thoughts, the symptoms, panic, and fears. Welcome. You're right where you're meant to be. All right, I am super excited about this. So I got this idea for some new episodes, and I'm really excited that I've been able to put this together. And this is the first one of its kind. So as you probably already know, I teach a 10-week program called Panic to Peace. And in it, I walk students through the process of healing their relationship with anxiety and overcoming their anxious thoughts, the symptoms, panic attacks, and fears. And I've now taught hundreds of students through my program. And I've had several students on my podcast to share their stories, which has been nothing short of incredible. And one of the coolest parts about guiding and supporting my students through their journeys is that I get to sort of be along for the ride. Like I get to witness their journeys and I get to see their journeys through them starting my program, through the program, and after the program. And one of the most amazing things to see is somebody fully transform from struggling so immensely with panic disorder and agoraphobia to coming out the other side and truly living. Like letting go of the safety nets, the limitations and fears, and just freaking living. So I want to show you this part of their journey too. So these episodes that you'll see sprinkled here and there, there'll be bonus episodes in addition to the episodes I release every Monday. You'll hear from students who have already been on my podcast and shared their journeys so that you can hear what life looks like for them now, now that they're fully recovered. Yep, I said fully recovered. (laughs) We sit down, we chat, and I ask questions like, So what the heck does life look like for you now? And how did you know you were recovered? And what was something that really helped you to get to where you are now? These conversations have been so amazing and I cannot wait for you to hear them. So let's dive in with the very first episode of this kind and hear from Hannah. I hope you enjoy it as much as we did. All right, so the first student that I have with me is Hannah, and so I want to give a little recap sort of of Hannah's journey so we understand where she was and and where she is now. So Hannah took Panic to Peace back in January of 2023. She then came on the podcast in May of 2023, and so I haven't really chatted with Hannah. We've chatted a little bit, but it's been almost a year, so... I'm really excited. We're recording this the end of February, 2024. So Hannah, welcome back to a Healthy Push podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me back, Shannon. It feels so different to be on this side of things now. So Right? 
Oh, I'm so excited. So, of course, if you haven't listened to Hannah's episode, I encourage you to go back. But can we just give a little snapshot, Hannah, of like what things looked like for you back when you joined the program and like where were you at then? Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was definitely at a low place. Um, I was completely housebound. Um was struggling to even like go out on my front porch or go to the house over my next door neighbor's house. Um, so to go from that to now I am fully recovered. Um, it's crazy to think about. It was just, you know, I'm not going to say it was an easy journey. It was incredibly tough, but the things that I learned along the way were super important. And then I know you say in a lot of your, um, podcasts and, Instagrams that one of the things you've promised yourself is to never go back to the place Mm -hmm. that you were. And I feel that so much. Like that is something I, I never planned to go back to because I was in such a low place. Um, just not happy, not living, totally restricted my life. Um, yeah, crazy how far, far. Oh, dang. Hearing you say, (laughs) I'm fully recovered. I'm like, ooh, I have goosebumps. Like, it is wild. So back when, of course, you came into the program, I remember seeing, like, just this commitment, like this, I'm doing this, and I really am fed up, and I'm not going to continue to live like this. And you put in so much hard work. So I know it definitely wasn't easy. And so, yeah, I want to encourage you, if you didn't listen to Hannah's episode, go back and listen to that. But let's chat about what the heck have things been looking like for you? What's what's life like now? <laughs> yeah, it's so much different. Um, I just live my day-to-day life, which seems crazy to say, but back, you know, when I was really in my lowest place, I wouldn't have said I was living. I was just mm-hmm. restricting my life to being inside. So now I'm going out. I'm going to the grocery store because I need to get groceries. I'm going shopping because I want to go shopping. Um, you know, just doing all the all the things that I want to do. I've been to basketball games with 20,000 people. Um, I've had numerous outings on the town. Um, been to what was really important to me was to finally get back going to church and I was able to do that and it's just been such a freeing feeling. Um, being back with, you know, the crowds don't bother me. The driving doesn't bother me. I'm driving on the interstate to see my parents next weekend. And it's like a three hour drive and that just doesn't even phase me anymore. So, um, and just to think that I'm saying this now, um, versus a year ago, I would have been like, no way am I getting on the interstate. So yeah, just living life. Ugh. So I know people are probably wondering, right, how did you know that you're recovered? Like even saying those words, I think for some people feel really like big and scary. So how the heck did you know? Like I, I'm recovered. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good question because honestly, I have toyed back and forth with this myself. I was like, well, I'm going and living and I'm doing the things, um, going to stores, going – but occasionally anxiety would set back in. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, dang it, I'm not recovered. You know, Um, here it comes again, battling this again. But then I think for me, the turning point was really when I realized that anxiety was coming back, but I wasn't avoiding the situations. Mm. I was just going and doing the thing with the anxiety. And then eventually it would go away or sometimes it would stay. And then I was like, okay, that's fine. But you're going to go back and do it again tomorrow or, you know, whatever. Um, And here recently I had medical anxiety has been my number one, like absolutely not since I was in elementary school. Um, And a couple of weeks ago I had a little medical thing come up and my doctor had asked me to go get some lab work done, which this time last year, like even going to the doctor would have been an absolute no. Um, but she asked me to go get some lab work done. And in my head, the anxiety was back. I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm feeling the anticipatory, I guess you could say anxiety again about going to get my blood work done. But 
this time it was like, I knew I was recovered because I was going to do it. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm pushing past those thoughts. Like it's, of course it's normal. The anxiety is going to be there. Um, Mm -hmm. I haven't had this, you don't get it done very often. And I haven't had it done in years. And I've been scared of this since I was, gosh, in elementary school. So just the fact that I was like, okay, no, you're going and getting it done. You're bringing the anxiety along with you. And then afterwards just lived my life again. It wasn't, you know, like I was driving on the interstate an hour after. So um, I think at that point I was like, yeah, you are fully recovered. This is awesome. Um, yeah. And it's not like the anxiety never comes up. Like it does come up because it's like you teach Shannon, it's an emotion mm-hmm. and you can't get rid of anxiety, but the way you're like your relationship with it and the way that you handle it is just so much different and a healthy, yeah. healthy relationship with it now, which is awesome. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm so glad that you shared this and what timing, like that's just wild that that happened recently. It sounds like you did what we we talked about in the program, right? Letting yourself be human, recognizing the reality is, right, this is anxiety producing. This has been anxiety producing since I was a little kid. Like it makes sense that I'm feeling anxious. And I think that's often a tricky thing, right? Because sometimes when we get to this place where we're feeling really good and like, okay, I'm I'm feeling like I'm recovered. And then we have these moments, we immediately sort of go, oh no, this isn't okay. And when you are getting to a healthier place, right, with anxiety, you're able to slow down and recognize, oh, wait, it actually makes sense that anxiety is here. And this is like, it, it just makes sense. Like I've I've always sort of had this. And I think everyone can share that, right, that even without an anxiety disorder, you have things that are anxiety producing and have been for a very long time. So that's so cool that you recognize that. But like just – okay, we're doing it. We're doing the thing. (laughs) Yeah. It's such a freeing feeling. I I just can't even explain it enough. Like, yeah, well, I can see it. I wish people could see your face (laughs) because it's like you, you can see it, but I'm curious. Of course, I'm sure people are also wondering what was something that you felt like was a missing piece or something that you really needed? Like you couldn't have recovered and gotten to this place that you're at now without this. And not to say, obviously, it was just this one thing that did it, because that's obviously the opposite of what I teach, but being like, what was one thing that was really helpful and pivotal for you? This is such a tough question, because like you said, I feel like there's (laughs) a million things that played a part in the recovery. Um, But I would say one of the biggest things was just making sure, well, first of all, self-compassion and like (laughs) telling myself that it doesn't have to look perfect, but you're, you're at least trying. And for me, that was huge because I am such a perfectionist at heart. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go, it's going to look this way and the end. And that I would go and try whatever it was that was anxiety producing and it wouldn't look perfect. And a lot of, I used to beat myself up about that, but throughout the journey, I learned, you know, no, it's okay for it to not look perfect. Like there are going to be times where you're going to resort back to the Mm -hmm. unhealthy habits and you're, you're probably going to run when that fight or flight comes. You're probably going to go back to your old compulsions or, um, you know, want your safety behaviors or safety objects. Um, but so for me, I think it was more, um, just making or letting myself know it didn't have to be perfect. Um, Yeah. It's, yeah. I think that it, was a huge one. And it's so tough to say just like one thing because right. there really were so many things, but that, and then just the consistency, I think of mm-hmm. continuing to do things, even when I didn't want to, like the anxiety would be there and like, Oh, I really don't want to do this. And it was that learning. I think the self learning in my head of do I mm-hmm. actually not want to do this thing or do I not want to do this thing because it's going to make me feel uncomfortable. And I know that, or I guess this is another thing too. Like I didn't know it was going to be uncomfortable, but I knew there was a chance that it could be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And so I wouldn't want to do that thing. And so I think a lot of it was just internal work and really teaching myself and pushing myself. 
Oh, you like literally hit on all the things that I was thinking. It's just been really cool to see your journey, but that it doesn't have to look perfect and it's it's not going to. And the sooner you sort of make peace with that, <laughs> the easier things become. And consistency, like huge. And it's consistency not just with, right, going out and, and doing the things, but it's like how are you responding to yourself, right? What is that inner dialogue? How are you treating yourself? Like that is such a big piece of the journey. Oh, gosh. It's so cool to see how far you've come and where you're at now. And like it's just – it's it's honestly crazy. Um, if you – had anything that you could tell somebody right now that you think would be helpful for them? If they're in that place of like, I I don't know, like maybe I am recovered or maybe I feel like I'm getting there. Like, eh, I don't know. What would you say? This is also another just tough question because I feel like um, <laughs> whenever I was going through the Panic to Peace course, I kept, you know, hinting at asking you, like, how did you know? And you're like, well, there, you know, I don't have a specific day or time, or I couldn't tell you this specific event. And in my head, that was always, that just blew my mind. Cause I'm like, how did you not know that you were recovered? I mean, you would feel like it would be this complete shift and it would be just very obvious. Right. Like um, you wake up and it's just like, oh, my life is beautiful now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I thought when I was, going through the course, I was like, oh, that doesn't really make sense. But then now being on this side of things, I definitely toyed around with that in my head of, you know, are you recovered? The feelings are coming back. And I think for me, it's just how you handle those feelings when they come. Um, are you resorting back to all those anxious, unhealthy habits? Or is it a healthy relationship with anxiety and you're pushing through it anyways and the anxiety makes sense and you're not letting it stop you from living um not letting it restrict you so i think i definitely had moments of i'm not sure if this is anxiety coming back i'm taking steps back or if this is recovery but i definitely yeah. think if you're having those feelings you're probably on the right track and towards yes. recovery. So. Yes. Ooh, so dang good, Hannah. <laughs> like, you should just come help me teach the Panic to Peace program. <laughs> it's just so cool. And I think something that you said that I kind of want to highlight, right, is I think when we feel uncomfortable or we feel anxious, we can tend to think, oh, no, the feelings are coming back. But we have to say, no, the feelings are just there. Like the feelings are just here. It's not that they're coming back. It's that I feel anxious and like you're still going to have those moments. So gosh, everything that you shared has been so incredibly helpful. I'm just so thankful and grateful for you for coming back on and updating us and obviously keep me updated because I want to hear all the things. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I cannot give enough credit to you, Shannon. Uh, uh, seriously. You, like, you, did, I it. you did it. You did it. I love it. I I mean, I can see, right? I could see when you started the program. I'm like, she's going to do it. She's going to do it. And it was just really cool that I got to be a part of it and help you. But you you did all the stuff. So I'm so proud of you. Thank you. It's such a great feeling. I hope you enjoyed this episode of A Healthy Push. If you want more, head on over to ahealthypush.com for the show notes and lots more tips, tools, and inspiration that will support your recovery. And if you're hoping for me to cover a certain topic, be sure to join my Instagram community at A Healthy Push and let me know in the comments what you want to hear next.